35 Kelvin. Looks very blue. No.
You're reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, live in love as Christ loved us and handed us over himself over to us. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence to Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, as is Christ is head of the church, he himself the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husband loves your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the baptism of water with the word, that he might present himself to the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his brother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reverence to Christ and the church. In any case, each one of you shall love his wife as himself, and the wife shall respect her husband. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, 
even even for a celibate, a celibate priest, like I just caught that as just being like absolutely just a wonderful phenomenon. Not none of us, none of us in life, you know, we know that feeling of being isolated, don't we? We know that feeling of being alone, and that can even enter into relationships. We can have somebody right next to us, but feel completely alone. God does not intend for us to ever be alone. And that is why he has given us the Holy Spirit. Remember Jesus on top of the mountain before he ascended? He gathered all of the apostles whom he loved up on top of that mountain. And he said before he ascended into heaven, he told them and gave them a mission. He said, I want you to go out to the furthest ends of the world. I want you to go out to every nation. And I want you to baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I want you to share all of the teachings that I've shared with you. And here's the most beautiful verse. Behold, I will be with you always, even to the end of time. God never wants any one of us to be alone. And he has given us the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, something that we anticipate 50 days after Easter. We are within the observance of these Easter days of glory. And how fitting to be able to celebrate marriage within them. When we think about the gift that God has given us in the church, and the gift of the Spirit, and what you are prepared to contract right before this altar, God is promising you his never failing love, so that you may never fail one another in love. That is why marriage should be contracted within the solemnity of church. And it is your testimony of faith that has brought you to this very significant day, valuing the faith, walking together, as Ricarda has given her heart to her God. A beautiful moment indeed in the Easter Vigil when we were gathered together. And I was able to confirm you and anoint you with the prison. Preparing you for this beautiful day. Today in the church we celebrate the feast of Saint, the man of great solemn but great silence and virtue. Saint John Paul II touched on the Holy Family with these significant words. He said, "I wish to invoke the protection of the Holy Family of Nazareth." I share that deep sentiment for you, that the holy protection of the Holy Family of Nazareth would be yours, and therefore the prototype and example of Christian family living. St. Joseph was a just man. May he always guard, protect, and enlighten families, and may he enlighten your family as we celebrate his feast day. Your marriage. May the Virgin Mary, who is the mother of the church, also be the mother of the church of the home, because you, my brother and sister, are forming a domestic church in your home today. You form that church with devotion, and may your devotion always be illuminated by a vigilant candlelight for your romantic dinners in life that you're going to have at least, at least. Once a week. Right? Deal? May Christ the Lord, the universal King, the King of families, be present in every Christian home as he was at Canaan, bestowing light, bestowing joy, serenity, and strength. May the Lord strengthen. But you are contract today in the sight of all of us who gather to support you with love and prayer. Now, when we consider the challenges that are before you, there are many. But each challenge provides an opportunity an opportunity to die to oneself for the sake of the other. Just before we celebrated and began the celebration, Jeremy and I were in the back chapel and we were having a conversation. And that is exactly what we were talking about. 
living to deny oneself for the sake of someone else. Today, you both choose the cross. The cross is an instrument for every Christian to look to, to remember that we are called to a self-denying love. But we live in the context of a culture that promotes selfishness over love. That we must win people's affections by cheapening our dignity. That we would make choices to serve other people's selfishness, to have a fake peace, and compromise true communication and sacrifice. Today, you step forward and express to this congregation that you are willing to embrace the cross, and you are willing to love from that instrument one another. Jesus himself expresses this in the scriptures for us today. In this gospel passage that we have from the gospel of John, he expresses no one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. What I love about the commandment that we hear in the gospel passage, do you remember when Jesus was being question about the law of Moses. He was being questioned, saying, Rabbi, great teacher, which of these commandments is the most important? you remember? And he expressed that you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, every amount of strength. And you shall love your neighbor as this is to summarize the commandments. I'm so glad that you guys knew that, by the way. Very good. It was a good moment. Now, to consider that, that you should love your neighbor as yourself. This is the summarization of the Ten Commandments. The first three relating to God and honoring Him properly. That you should keep the Sabbath, that you should keep the Lord's Day solemn and holy a day of rest. That you should never Take the Lord's name, your God, who is the creator of heaven and earth, that you would never take his name and place it in vain or use it very flippantly in conversation. And finally, most important, that you would never have another God that you would serve with your time, with your talent, and your treasure, that you would place everything subordinately to him. Those are the first three commandments of the ten. The remaining seven commandments relate to how we relate with one another. The law should govern us in love. But what St. Paul was into in the scriptures is that we became slaves of the law. We became prisoners to it. And people lorded the law over people. So Jesus takes in the gospel passage today the next step further, doesn't it? He says, this is my commandment. This is why I love this gospel that we chose today. Because he takes it to the very next level. Quote, this is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. How does Jesus love you? Someone so willing to die, communicate a conviction of love that would so move your heart that you would remain loyal to that person forever. We see it in all of the movies, don't we? When someone lays down their life heroically. I mean, I just watched James Bond on the way back from, uh, from Europe. Every great movie 
as a hero that would sacrifice himself, a Christ-like figure. Hollywood has made millions of dollars off of it. But the church still confesses one love that is greater than all the loves. And that is the love that we serve. And that is the love that has brought us to this very significant moment where you choose to express that love for one another. St. John Paul II also expressed this philosophy of love. He's one of the greatest philosophers of the history church and certainly the world. He said, love is not merely a sentiment. It's not merely a feeling, but an act of the will, preferring in a constant manner the good of the other to the good of oneself. It's that self-denying, outpouring love that we hear in the second reading that we chose today. Let's return to that for just a moment to savor the sweet words that you have discerned for your own marriage. Live in love as Christ loved us and handed himself over to us. Be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Always search the moment to humble yourself before one another. And I assure you, every conflict that you will come to, you will not only move through, you will come out victorious over every single challenge that you will face. God wishes to make you victorious. So that what you begin today, in a solemn beginning of beauty, grow and mature and advance in holiness, the greatest beauty that can ever be revealed in this world. So my friends, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined, and the two shall become one flesh. So let us witness with them what God does in the world. Joining together making always one love. So I invite you, wedding party, to please come forward. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and at the community, your attention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord for the sake of seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated at holy baptism, that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all responsibilities of married life. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Jeremy and Ricardo, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared, as you follow the path of marriage, to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? We do. We do. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God? and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church. We do. We do. Since it is your intention to enter into the holy covenant of marriage, I invite you to join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. I, Jeremy, take you Ricardo. I, Jeremy, take you Ricardo. For my lawful life. For my lawful life. To have to to have and to hold from this day forward, from this day forward, for better or for worse, for better or for worse, for richer or for poorer, for richer or for poorer, in sickness and in health, in sickness and in health, to God, 
to love and to share us. I regard it to be a journey to be my husband. To have it to hold from this day forward. For better or for worse. For mature or for poor. In sickness and health. To love and to cherish. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God who joined together our first parents in paradise, strengthen and bless in Christ the consent of the affair before the church, so that when God joins together, no one will put aside. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity.
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families and friends of Jeremy and Ricardo, gathered here today, that they continue to enrich each other with love and support through the years, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples throughout the world, that God may continue to bless and strengthen their unions and for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unity of Jeremy and Ricardo's families, for regular family gatherings and geographical proximity of both families. Lord, hear our prayer. For family members and loved ones who suffer or have gone before us, marked with the sign of faith, especially Myra, Red, Fox, Erna, Kunku, Gloria, Cook, that they may live in happiness with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O oh Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing but ever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those who have filled with your blessing. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
ere we hope to enjoy the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Now the ritual calls us to a time of silent prayer, and I invite you as you rest in the spirit, a time of communion and fellowship, and to offer up prayers of favor for Jeremy and Silence and Ricardo. Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to present her as a holy and spotless bride for himself. Alleluia. Let us pray. By the power of the sacrifice of the Lord, accompany with your loving favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart and love those who have already joined in this holy union and replenished with what bread and one chalice through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you of one heart and love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity, so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is now my esteem, honor, and pleasure to announce Mr. and Mrs. Jeremy and Ricardo Lutz. You may kiss your bride. Thank you. 